All right, welcome to the Ravid Show. We are here at Google Next, and look who I with me, Nirav Mehta, Senior Director at Google. Uh, Nirav, welcome to the Ravid Show. It is such a pleasure to catch up on day three, and I know we met on the day zero itself, right? At the welcome reception, and it has been like we've discussed about so many things. I, but today, I also wanted to bring it to our audience and uh, learn more about the infrastructure side, about the customer stories, and uh, much more. But would you like to introduce yourself? What are you working on? And what do you do at Google? First of all, thanks for having me. And it was a real pleasure to meet you earlier. And also, hello to our audience. I'm very happy to be here. Uh, so I lead product management. Yeah. for uh, cloud infrastructure mm -hmm. aspects. And this is basically all the platforms on which uh, many of our solutions run. Right. AI workloads, non-AI workloads. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's where I, I geek out on, on a lot of the infrastructure. Yes, exactly. And, uh, you know, on the uh, on the first day itself when we met, it was so good to, you know, hear about all the developments that hap that's happening in the infrastructure and how the space is evolving as well. Uh, I would love to know, because I, I'm pretty sure in the last three days you've been back to back with customers, with partners, and there are so many stories that we can learn from as well. Not only just about the challenges, but the solutions and yeah. uh, how, how do you see the space moving. But just would you like to share a little about... Uh, what what are you hearing from the customers? How is it helping them to get to the next level in the world of AI as well? Yeah, I think uh, it's hard not to notice the excitement in the halls. Yeah. Uh, with uh, especially customers from all sorts of segments. Mm. Retailers, healthcare, uh, law firms, all of them are watching what is possible with generative AI. Mm. And they are starting to see things come to life that are very relevant to their business. Right. Uh, so uh, I can share a few examples that stood out to me. Please. Uh, retail customers, mm -hmm. uh, they have a very diverse set of challenges in making information that is very uh, central to their business available at the fingertips mm -hmm. of uh, employees that are right on the front lines. You know, right. could be uh, truck drivers out in their fleet that are doing deliveries. Mm. Uh, could be a sales representative talking to customers. So one retailer um, in the food industry that distributes food to many, many countries mm -hmm. has done some very uh, interesting migration to Google Cloud. The first thing they did is they moved their SAP systems to Google Cloud infrastructure. Right. Uh, and, and they do this so that they can run with higher reliability, more performance. Mm. So the same systems that they were maintaining themselves are now running much better on Google Cloud. But that's just the beginning. Right. Since then, they've taken the data that's in these SAP systems, connected them uh, using BigQuery, mm -hmm. and then uh, used Vertex AI to, to perform a, a variety of... Uh, uh, manipulations and, and use uh, natural language to, to cut it short. Mm. Imagine I'm a truck driver uh, out for deliveries and I say, hey, what's um, what's this customer I'm going to next? Uh, what are the deliveries that they are expecting today, mm -hmm. just to be sure? Yeah. And could you please confirm the address one more time? All this hands-free while sitting in their truck uh, goes to a chat bot which is using natural language and then generative AI to, to really answer everything rapidly. Yes. Previously, those customers would have to rely on a lot of expertise in the front lines, people who know how to call the right people, access the right systems. So, right. So that's just one example. It's it's actually a huge challenge that you're talking about, has been, which has been resolved by you know getting the generative AI and the power of NLP together because I feel obviously there used to be errors made because when that's you know something even misread now it is so clear for a truck driver to go and ask questions and get the relevant information even reconfirm things that and if you're a global company mm -hmm. suddenly you have this chatbot that's multilingual so whatever you are doing is, is suddenly at the fingertips in a very global way interacts with the employees wherever they are yeah and it, does it also have to do with something on the lines where, and I'm just curious, that's yeah, why I'm asking sure. you about, uh, you know, it used to be where there are, you know, these truck drivers are obviously go around at places where there are deserts, they don't have reception and all of those things. But the, now the model is so strong where 
Uh, they don't have to make a call. They just need to ask the system and they get all the info. And, and uh, with Google, we can do so much by integrating maps data. Mm, right, right. right. All the business data, make it all uh, very human and accessible. Right. And that's what excites me. I'm sure uh, you, it you does. plenty of such examples. Yes. That when technology comes to life and you can see how every uh, category of employee that's just Mind-blowing. Mind-blowing. Yeah, 100%. In terms of, uh, you know, also the future. So how do you yeah. see the future uh, about the things that you're working on? Yes. Where do you see it in the next, uh, say, two to three months? I have, I have, this is my favorite question. I, at first, it used to be where, oh, two to three years. No more, it's two to three years. It's just two to three months. It's <laughs> spot on. So, okay, so coming to what I work on day to day, all this... AI uh, processing, all the workloads, they're putting a lot of strain on the underlying infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So one of the statistics we shared is large language models, they are measured in the billions of parameters. Mm. Every year they are growing 10 times in size. 10 times. So this is a hockey stick and, and it's really challenging our infrastructure globally for, for any vendor, any cloud. I spend most of my time trying to optimize our platform mm. in very specific ways for these workloads. Right. You can't. You no longer can just throw uh, hardware at it and say, you know, just a few more uh, chips, yeah. some more memory. That's not going to cut it. So one of the things that we are doing very, very systematically is workload optimization. Mm -hmm. And so whether it's AI training, AI learning, um, non-AI applications, all mm. of these are heavily optimized so that the existing CPU's memory is more efficient. And not only more efficient from a performance perspective, but also energy efficiency. Right. Just think of how much power will be consumed uh, running all these workloads. We have to be responsible uh, very true. In, in how we build our infrastructure. Yeah, no, it's very important, and these are fantastic points that you're sharing. Also, quick question in terms of, you know, and this is one of the questions that I ask a lot of enterprise leaders as well, that about the implementation of Gen AI in their organization, and they've sometimes, like there are, obviously it depends from the industry to industry, but there's a common perspective that, oh, can we know the starting point to get into the game? which used to be a talk last year, now they've found the starting point, mm -hmm. uh, but the implementation and then scaling that up is a huge challenge. So do you have anything to uh, you know, share about that? Yeah, uh, I, I think you're, you're exactly right. Most of the CIOs I'm talking with are saying, of course, I'm bought into where I want to go. Right. How can I start? And frankly, we've, we've got uh, really good answers now. Mm. While generative AI has become a lot more um, front and center, Google has been about data and AI for for a decade. Right? True. Many of our customers start by modernizing their data, transforming their data, like the examples I gave you. Right. Now we are adding the element of how can LLMs and generative AI help. So we have templates mm. for how to easily, first of all, migrate your workloads to the cloud, mm. and then to take that data and without having to build new data lakes or new data, you know, expensive database migrations, how to make use of this data very, very asynchronously using other Google services while not touching your production systems or impacting them. Wow. We have those, uh, fortunately, and we can share dozens of examples with these customers. We connect CIOs with each other so they wow. can share the journey because yeah. one of the big things they're asking is how do I reskill? Reskill, right. And and what we are finding is especially with generative AI applied to cloud operations, we are reducing the reskilling need. To give you a very concrete example, all these new products, if you have to get certified and trained on them, mm -hmm. uh, it's going to take months for the uh, IT employees. So we've made it easy, for example, to ask our cloud platform, how can I uh, optimize my deployment for reliability? Mm. Simple lang language question. And we would come back with multiple options of you have deployed this way, with this, you can reduce your uh, recovery time if you fail from minutes to seconds. And so now you didn't have to really go learn all that. Yeah. So there's a big application of generative AI to how 
cloud operators use clouds. I love it. And, uh, you know, to be honest, that's one of the things as well where enterprise leaders feel more confident about where they, if I'm from a finance, a financial services company, if you have more use cases that you can share, and Google always has that. Yes. So it becomes easier if you're saying you're connecting CEO, CIOs to each other, yes. that is more like connecting dots uh, because it becomes easier where they can understand where they were and now where they are. Exactly. How did they navigate those discussions with their board? Exactly. They, they share with each other. True. True. It's Wonderful. awesome. Yeah, awesome. This is uh, Nirav. I can chat with you for another hour. I know, keeping time in mind. I just wanted to, uh, and we'll we'll keep talking for sure on the Ravit show. Uh, but just wanted to ask for our audience if they want to reach out to you, learn more about what you're doing. But also, in general, I'm pretty sure uh, there are so many enterprise leaders who would want to connect and you know understand how. Uh, you're working with other organizations, where can they do that? Yes, I'm uh, very active on LinkedIn. Okay. I welcome interaction there. And I really I commend you on what the great job you've done here and, and Thank what you, you do every day. So please keep uh, doing what you do. It's just the community and you yeah. guys who help us, you know, obviously keep us going and keep us on the toes. So thank you very much, Nirav. It thank was you. such a it was, pleasure hosting here. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.